You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. To It's All About You with your host, Dr. Martha Latz. Dr. Martha will offer various solutions that will expand your horizons, offer solid possibilities, and guide you through developing the skills needed for your desired outcome in everyday life. So now, please welcome the host of It's All About You, Dr. Martha Latz. Welcome, welcome. We are coming to you live from BBM Global Network, TuneIn and iHeartRadio, to name a few. And I am your host, Dr. Martha Lance. My show is It's All About You, and I'm broadcasting from the East Coast, where I have an office in South Florida. As you know, I, my expertise is as a licensed marriage and family therapist, transition, life, and relationship coach dealing with all things to do with the effects of social media and communication with our co-workers, at home, with our family and friends. I invite you to visit my website, www.auniquetherapycenter.com, to learn more about me, my services, and to see what I've been up to. To, like my interview with Donna on her show, Live It Up Here, which will air, by the way, uh, February the 15th, and where you can also contact me directly with the form to schedule one-on-one time and send that directly to me with my by the email address. Or if you just want to send me one privately, it, my email address is lats2000 at aol.com, or calling my office directly at 1-561-300-4066. I am so happy to be with you today and coming to you live from BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio and iHeartRadio with part two of Cupid's Guide for Valentine's Day. Um, you know, how do I know if it's just friendship, something deeper, or nothing at all? And I must confess to you that I get so excited to be live with you that I keep forgetting to mention that the phone lines are open and you can call directly into the show at 1-866-451-1451. And this is BBM uh, Global, where the world comes to talk, and so do we. So call in at 1-866-451-1451 and to be ready to ask any questions or give comments. Um, and talk we will on on this show. On the last show, if you recall, it was about part one of Cupid's Guide for Valentine's Day. We explored ways to take miscommunication out of our Valentine messages and give and clues and skills to make clearer communication specifically for Valentine's Day, but also for the rest of the world. Uh, Today will be part two of Cupid's Guide for Valentine's Day. As I said earlier, is it just friendship or is it something deeper or is it nothing at all? Someone asked me, why do I spend a lot of times from um, Thanksgiving all the way up to Valentine's Day concentrating on those holidays? And so I'll answer that for you. The reason is that um, this sets the stage for your relationships if you think back and you think um, what has occurred in the past for your relationships going forward. Um, So, you know, giving you time to think about and maybe making changes so that the next time that there's something very big like a birthday or like an anniversary or like a family gathering, uh, you're prepared and ready. Just 
just for your FYI. Okay, you know, part two, this is this just friendship or something deeper or nothing at the all. You know, those of you may be in new relationships, maybe for three or four weeks or for a few months. Um, as one person um, stated, what am I to do? I don't know. I'm in a, a new relationship. What's too much to do? What's too little? Too little. Uh, several of you who are in long-term relationships, and I just had a few people this week, have indicated that the excitement is at an all-time zero. You have had years of boring Valentine's Day last year, and it was 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 that way and you you promised each other that you'd make it different but every valentine's day is always we're always expecting something even if we haven't done anything different we're usually expecting something more romantic and nothing ever does happen in that way and i looked at my calendar just before going on air and valentine's day is closer than i even thought Plus, um, I'm wondering, last year they stopped making those little small candy hearts that had the sayings on it, be mine or sweet, sweetie or, um, you know, something like that. I'm wondering, I haven't checked it out. I'm wondering if they're uh, making them this year. You know, think about this. It's, it's Valentine's Day and yikes, it's about eight days and counting. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm in a I'm building in a little bit towards a pa- panic, and it's understandable. In my experience, both professionally and personally, personally, uh, personally for for Valentine's Day and professionally, Valentine's Day highlights in uh, in your face kind of way what creatures of habits we really are. Um, and then the panic sets in and we're all coming, uh, all of this is coming right on the heel of several major holidays. So on the big V day, as I call it, we want to do and make something different or at least make a change. And yet we find ourselves every year doing the same thing over and over again. I have personally experienced Valentine's Day and from the people that come to see me is that it it is a dividing day. It divides partnered and singled and the anxiety rises. But that all started, I think, um, in grade school with how many cards you could collect at your desk um, and uh, how popular you are when you opened up all of your desk and all the cards were there or your locker and they all t- start coming, uh, tumbling out in middle school. Uh, and it just continues to explode over the years. You know, think about that, p- what's posted on social media. This is what I gave my, my love interest. This is what I received from my love interest or my partner or my husband. Um, and... It is the largest, the second largest giving holiday. And I was blown away again, as always. It always blows me away. Even before New Year's Eve, side by side Valentine displays were going up as the Christmas Hanukkah holiday displays were still up and on markdown. Plus, the dating apps beginning to uh, their push for finding the right partner didn't have the right partner for New Year's Eve or for the, uh, for for the other holidays. So let's find one now. And there's that low muttering. I think you've all heard about it being commercial per, commercialized, uh, like uh, someone you know uh, uh, has said. You know my budget is creeping, and on the second thought. What budget? I don't have a budget anymore. After Val, after Christmas, I'm the the uh, the bills are starting to come in. So here it is, another Valentine's Day. This is a great place for us to pause and pick it up on the other side. You've been listening to It's All About You live on BBM Global, Tune In, and iHeart Radio with me, your host, Dr. Martha. And let's find out what to be expected this Valentine's Day. 
Tune into It's All About You with host Dr. Martha Latz, a lively weekly broadcast on BBM Global Network, one of the most empowering shows for time-starved, overscheduled multitaskers. The professional expertise of Dr. Latz is directly available live every Thursday at 1 p.m. to answer and address concerns about relationships, life transitions of career, meeting, dating, and committed relationships. It's All About You with Dr. Latz will expand your understanding of current concerns across your relationships by broadening and expanding possible solutions in developing skills for mutually desired outcomes. Dr. Martha's expertise is as a licensed marriage and family therapist, life, transition coach, and all things to do with communication at work, home, and with friends. Check out her website at auniquetherapycenter.com. Essential Nutrients, LLC, is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients, LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. Welcome back. I'm your host, Dr. Martha, coming to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio and iHeartRadio. And before the break, we were talking about, um, on the show, It's All About You, about uh, Valentine's Day and um, the days after Valentine's Day. And what I have heard, in fact, I heard it this week, um, people still waiting to find their forever partner. And the word soulmate started being batted around a little bit during um, the session. Both a a man and a woman was talking to me about that. Um, And that... They've yet to show up. And the question is, will I ever find my soulmate? This is a, this is a topic. This quest for soulmate is is a topic that uh, could be just for several shows and maybe maybe we might uh, maybe we might do that. Let me know what you think. So let's get back to Valentine's Day though, because it's right here. You know, it's up. It's upon us. Uh, we are, uh, there are thoughts on us finding our ro- and be are being discovered by our romantic soulmate. And as you've noticed, as um, in the middle of this week, um, it started with the ads are starting to come out on. If you're watching TV, sometimes on radio, you will hear about online dating sites, and um, you will hear about you know trying to find your soulmate. Um, and there was one line on a dating site ad that ended. It, it's, it says, come find me, almost like it's a game of hide and seek. My advice is to stop waiting or looking for that one person, because I'd like you to consider this. Um, there's 8 billion plus, I'll repeat that, 8 billion plus people in the world. And to think about it, how can there only be one soulmate for any of us? Plus, I am almost certain you have already met several of your soulmates, and you don't even know about it. Soulmate means that naturally deep feeling for one um, another. And you have that, and that could be friendship. You know, um, it could be it could be all forms in all forms of compatible uh, company. Friendship is one of those um, one of those things that we have that we you know we just kind of click with a person, uh, and it's, there's a deep friendship there. Then there's that romantic soulmate connection. This is the one that is most commonly referred to uh, when the subject of soulmate comes up in the conversation. So I want to be clear here. Um, what any soulmate connection, especially the romantic connection, is not, 
is that there will not there that there won't be any uh, disagreements or un realistic ideas and expectations. You know, we have them. They have them in our friendships, even our deep friendships. We sometimes disagree. Uh, so, so I just want to be clear about that. The soulmate connection, whether it's the friendship, whether it's um, you know romantic. Uh, very uh, that deep one. There's going to be disagreements, and there's going to be unrealistic ideals and expectations. So, here is um, something to consider. Um, if you're going to consider, you know, what I have is this just a friendship, or is it something else? If you both find yourself picking up the phone or texting each other almost at the same time, because you know we're not using our phones that much anymore, we're using text or instant messenger, um, and you hear or you type, ah, I was just, I was just getting ready to um, connect with you. That usually is an indication that that's a deep friendship whether it's with a, a female or with a male, uh, it's a deep friendship. There's um, the author of Love Sense, that's Dr. Johnson, she's a clinical psychologist, uh, writes just for the romantic connection. She writes, just holding hands or being close um, with close contact uh, and that you can feel that energy moving back and forth, you know, kind of like electricity, that this could indicate that it's romantic. As I've said to you, um, you may already know each other for years. You may have already connected on some level with someone or someone's uh, on that deep level. You may have, if it's a romantic relationship, you may have met in high school. You may have run in the same social groups. Uh, maybe even dated and broke up and moved on and then run into each other from time to time, connected, reconnected, um, uh, and reconnect again, and voila, all of a sudden love, uh, love will bloom or re-blooms. This Valentine's Day, I'd like to ask you, take a closer look. Take a closer look at the people that consistently show up in your life and that are surrounding you. Take a look now. Think about that. Um, think who they are. They could be male. They could be female. They could be female. And they could be male. Because those are the people that have the friendship. That's that soulmate friendship connection. They're there no matter what. Now we can focus and refocus perhaps on on this as the call of that the soul is giving for you to give yourself permission. Now think about that. Soulmate, that could be the soul call of giving yourself permission and the willingness to do so. Uh, and to think about and speak about those people you meet or recognize your friend may be as, maybe, i just saying, maybe um, a soulmate. A romantic soulmate. I'm just saying. So what do we know for sure? Yeah, okay. We know that in a few short days of February, uh, that may translate into blah, panic, it's Valentine's Day, it's eight days away and grown not again. We know that is for sure. Um, and Valentine's Day are any thoughts around the romantic soulmate will bring us into the stages of where we are as a couple, where we are as companions, where we are in a long-term rela relationship. So, you know, thinking about that and trying to say, how can I explain that? I think the easiest way to do that is using the seasons. Now, I'm talking about the seasons, no matter what the actual weather is outside. Uh, where I'm down here, it's it's cloudy and it's windy. So I'm going to talk about how to look at our relationships 
Wow. And to find out where we are in the stages. You've been listening to me, your host, Dr. Martha, on It's All About You, live from BBM Global Network. Tune in on iHeartRadio. Stay tuned. Come back and let's find out what the lenses are. According to the American Nurses Association, there are approximately three and a half to four million nurses in the United States. So where do all these nurses work? What kind of roles do they have? What kind of education and training help to prepare them for so many different settings. What kind of impact do nurses have on patient outcomes? The World Health Organization has announced that 2020 will be the year of the nurse, honoring the 200th birth anniversary of Florence Nightingale. An international initiative called Nursing Now is underway to raise the profile of nursing. The National Academy of Medicine has convened a committee to create the future of nursing 2020 to 2030 that will focus on how the nursing profession can create a culture of health, reduce health disparities, and improve the health and well-being of the U.S. population. Learn more and join Joyce Batchelor on All About Nursing, Wednesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time on the BBM Global Network. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Life is a renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daily Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Welcome back. I'm your host, Dr. Martha, coming to you live from BBM Global. Tune in and iHeartRadio. And before the break on all, It's All About You, I was talking to you about looking at your, the stages of where your relationship is. And I think the easiest way to do that is you Use the uh, seasons for that. Now, I don't care what the weather is outside right now. Uh, it's just it's the, we're using uh, the seasons to define relationships. For example, spring usually uh, connotes new relationship when I meet the and when I say the word spring, you know, we are more energized and this relationship is new and we're discovering emotions uh, with this new partner for the fir- first time, first of everything, the first kiss, the first time we held hands, the first time we had a long hug, uh, the first time that we uh, decided that we agreed upon something, all of the first, that's considered um the spring of a relationship. Then your relationship may be in the stage of what is called the summer, which is an exciting time. We are looking for our next adventure together. We may be planning um, vacations. We may be um, we may be continuing all those discoveries um, about each other. And the conversations are deepening and possibly moving towards, you know, a more future. Uh, orientation. And then there's the fall of a relationship, the, the season of the fall or autumn, I like autumn and, and better. Um, and that's when you're, um, you're defining the uh, DTR, defining the relationship. Um, you have established your late nights, how you're spending your weekends together. Um, you're, you're on uh, the level of commitment. You may be in the process of moving in uh, to each other. You've been meeting each other's friends and families. It's a, a quieter time because you've settled in with one particular partner. And then we get to the winner of a relationship. And that's that's where um, a lot of times a lot of the disc, uh, discontent comes out. You're thinking of splitting. You're moody. You're grumpy. You're grouchy. You filed away grievances just to bring them out 
and our your likes and dislikes of each other is growing and growing and burr the relationship is cold winter of the relationship so no matter what the season or weather your relationship may be be up front with the future that you see with each other make plans to talk about that uh, come up with some mutually agreeable plan if you've decided to tell your partner you have taken this job in another state and you really you really didn't go in to the relationship that the person and it's realistic that the person is not going to move you know you got to figure out how you're going to say your goodbyes um, or what you're going to do with the relationship that's a tough one i just threw a real tough one out so I'm tall, just back that one away. I walk walk that one back a bit. So whatever stage your relationship is, um, no matter what the weather is outside, there is a potential to renew or sustain itself with skills that will not cost you a cent. However, these skills that you're going to be learning are priceless for your relationship in whatever in whatever phase it is. The best part is, is that there's still time to begin or regain some of these skills before Valentine's Day. And it may be time to add or bring in some newer meaning to the day. So what do I mean about that? Well, when was the last time you took a personal inventory? There's a book that I keep on my desk that's that I use for a uh, meditation starter, and it's uh, the book that's called um, The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse. And there's one piece um, that's there. It's really, look it up if you want to. It's really great. Um, but the boy is looking into the pond and he looks at, he's looking at his reflection and he says, all we, we notice what's going on on the outside, but what the, where, where it really is, is what's going on on the inside. And so when's the last time you took a look at your own insights, uh, and you invested, uh, and made an investment in yourself you know, when we get into partnerships, sometimes we forget about us. Um, so this is a good time to reflect on what attracted you to each other in the first place. And my my all-time favorite is put down those phones. Disconnect from the laptop. Close off the inner time, uh, the internet Um, And there will be time for you and your partner, because if you don't, your partner might not be there when you finally do put it down. So it's a good time to do that. And then listen. Now, you know, I've talked about listening as part of effective communication, but it's really important to do this. Take the that personal inventory is when your partner is talking, are you really listening to what you're um, what your partner is saying, are you taking that time that the, your partner is speaking to form your response back or to refor- uh, for, form your defense back? And the my all-time favorite is, you know, I hear it's only stop nagging, stop nagging. Well, stop nagging. It's in your power to do that if you're the one that's um, that that's doing it. Uh, it never works because when you nag, you move from being the love interest uh, to the parent or the boss or the principal. And if you want to stop the nagging from your partner, then stop procrastinating. Because when you procrastinate whatever your partner is t- telling you, uh, you move from being the love interest, you move yourself from being that love interest to being the child. So think about that. If you don't want nagging, and it's usually some a repetitive thing, and I'll just say change the light bulb. That's really just a real you know, um, easy one. Change the light bulb, and you haven't changed the light bulb yet because you've got the high ceilings and you have to get the ladder out or whatever, and it's been four weeks and the light is still out, stop it. You know, If you want the nagging to stop, stop procrastinating. Um. Ask for what you really want. 
Ask for what you really want in a relationship. Ask for what you really want from your partner. Um, ask for what you really want and what can happen. You will get it, won't get it, or you'll get a compromise. So we got, we're going to take a short break here. You've been listening to uh, BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio with me, your host, live on It's All About You. And stay tuned, come back, and we're going to think about other things uh, along this list of our internal self. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern. Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. There are artists, and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians, and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History in the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at Les Colday Beaux-Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20-year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. Welcome back. You're listening to It's All About You coming to you live from BBM Global. Tune in and iHeartRadio, and I am your host, Dr. Martha. Before the break, we were talking about, you know, uh, ask for what you tr- really want when you're looking at it, and have you been doing that? What can happen are three, three things. You'll get it, you won't get it, or you'll get a compromise. But if you don't ask, all you'll start doing is continuing to build resentment. So, Another thing that uh, pulls a relationship down really to low levels is that you're not helping each other with those weekly boring chores. Now, both of you work uh, to be, um, to be, um, oh, let me, me, how do I want to say that? To have, to have one person doing all those weekly chores, or this is where the, the nagging comes in. We put those weekly chores off that we've been asked. That's going to not help you build a team. And when you're in relationship, part of being in the relationship is being a team. And when you're letting one person do all of the chores, especially if they're working outside of the house, or uh, the one person that has a, a office in the house, or maybe both. You kind of kind of even that stuff out. So think about that. The other thing is, how can we do some really great things for our relationships? Create some mini traditions that are just unique for your relationship, and that can be sustainable. After the holidays, the traditional holidays are gone. Um, this becomes your your thing, and it goes a long way to keep your relationship building at, to the level of where you want it to be. For example, you know, there's a certain TV show that you watch, a weekly show. Uh, you can watch that together. Um, have making sure that you have coffee with each other or tea or whatever you drink in the morning before you off go off and running to your separate uh, chores and responsibilities of the day. You can share a banana, half a banana, or flowers. 
Um, this is one of my favorites um, because it shows that you're being thought about. Just pick up something just because. You notice things and uh, things may need to uh, be picked up, you know, and it may be as simple as toilet paper, maybe as simple as uh, soda. It may be as simple as, oh, I noticed that the yogurt that um, uh, we eat in the morning um, is, is gone and the flavor that my, my partner likes uh, is gone. So that the person that does uh, the, the picker up or that uh, picks up something for just because, um, when, when have you said, oh, I not only like you, I not only love you, I also like you. I also appreciate you. Thanks. And then you can make out like crazy like you did in the beginning. Um, this is expressing gratitude. This is expressing appreciation. And it's it cultivates um, and deepens the richness of your relationship. How many of you, and this I have found is sorely lacking in a lot of relationships, created in your in your space a drama free zone a drama free zone that you can be that means that there's no drama past that point um say our our time uh say the drama free zone is the bedroom or the drama free zone is a uh, time there's nothing that we're going to have that's going to be drama or cause drama between uh, after 9 o'clock or 10 p.m. or before our first cup of coffee to our tea. You get the idea that, you know, having a, a place where you know that even though you have something important to talk about or work out, there is a drama-free zone and either and both of you can be there and you can call that where you can go. Relationships are great, but the main job of the skills that I was just talking about exposes the myths that kill relationships. Now, what does that mean? We all have and we all know the myths that run around and I'm running in the background of our, our relationship and it re erodes the happiness and the contentment that we have in our relationship at any level. And if you're especially in the winter of your relationship, it can really, really escalate that. Um, so each of you hold a thought of what your relationship was or is or what you hope it to be. And it may not be the same, but neither one of you know what that is. So, and it's not been clearly shared. And, and so when it's not clearly shared, you're going to be running around like in the same on the same gerbil wheel with the relationship and looking at each other your frustrations are grow, are, are slowly building uh, and it um, painfully 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 is destroying the happiness you once felt and you're trying to hold on desperately in your relationship I want to talk about a few uh, uh, relationship myths um, the relationships, especially that soulmate kind, um, the passion that the passion will not fade. Um, our soulmate, uh, like our parents, automatically when we were little, know what we need, or that they that if our parents didn't know exactly what we need, uh, the hope is that our soulmate does. Mm, you're an adult. You have been using your words for a while don't rest on that mind reading stuff communicate your thoughts communicate your feelings communicate your needs um for whatever wherever you are your needs in the workplace when you're dealing with a workplace energy socially at home but when it comes to our romantic and soulmate energy relationship, we just automatically expect our needs and feelings to be anticipated as when we were kids. And I want to repeat that. That's not going to happen. Um, and the rub is that both of you are expecting this. And then you find yourself that your emotional side and your emotional kids are in, in charge of the relationship. The second, myth, the second myth that I want to um, look at is that passion never fades. 
that is a myth. Daily routine, the lack of time, begins this process of the passion fading. Okay, this is a great place for us to pause, and we're going to take a, a, pa- a pause and a break. You've been listening to It's All About You live on BBM Global. Tune in and iHeartRadio. Uh, stay tuned. We'll find out what is squashing that passion. WikiWags brings harmony back into your home for male dogs and their owners. Inventor and entrepreneur Linda Jangula has created the disposable doggy diaper wraps made with the male dog in mind. The built-in wicking ability prevents rashing and other potential health issues for your dog. Each wrap comes in four sizes and has dual reattachable magic tabs for easy adjustments. And each size has a 7-inch logo strip for adjustability. So they are comfortable and easy to use. No more fuss, just leave the mess to us. Whether you're in or out, your dog will be free to run about. Stop cleaning and start enjoying your home, and you can even leave your dog alone. To order your WikiWags, visit WikiWags.com, or to find out where to buy WikiWags in your town, visit MyWikiWags.com and start enjoying having man's best friend around. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the B. BBM Global Network. Welcome back to It's All About You live on BBM Global. Tune in and iHeartRadio. Before the break with me, your host, we were talking about the myths that are there and that the idea that passion never uh, fades, but it does. With the as our responsibilities grow in our relationship, um, and as our roles begin to expand, we have less time or energy for each other. Not that we don't want it; it's just not there. So we have to have to allow ourselves and explore to do something uh, new together. When the passion starts pay, pl- uh, fading, what is also there is their boredom in the relationship. The next myth, which is one that I want you to really pay attention to, is the, that a child or a pet or a new pet will improve a relationship. It will not. It will bring challenges, um, and it could cloud all the judgments. So, be careful that you're holding that the relationship will regain the passion when you have something like that going on. Also, I want you to think about a couple of things. Jealousy is not a true sign of loving and caring. It's that you're, that the partner's own insecurity. Um, no matter how much uh, propping up you do with caring self-confidence, comp- uh, Uh, for your partner. This is no cure for their jealousy. Um, This is another uh, another thing is that fights ruin relationship. This is not true. Um, Fights may be what you need to have. It's how you handle your fighting or your disagreement. I like to call them disagreements and an interesting point of view that doesn't agree with mine. Um, So even if you're disagreeing, uh, you know, think about it as a disagreement, an interesting point of view, Uh, and it's not a personal uh, attack. I had one person come in and thank me uh, yesterday, by the way, that uh, that that being able to have um, 
uh, the heirs, they're airing their differences that would lead to a fight and not talking for uh, a week was able to be out there and kind of like, um, as she described it, put a pen in the balloon of what could have been a, a really bad argument. Uh, and then they were more creative because they weren't, they, it, it just popped it. So think about that one. And uh, the other one is that, you know, we the person must change for our relationship to be a success. Now, with the one with, with the jealousy and this one, I want to put a pause here and say, unless there is abuse, abuse present. Um, if there's abuse present, that is the time that you go to a professional or even if you suspect abuse so that you can evaluate it with someone who will be an impartial evaluator and looking at the facts that are being presented. So uh, I'm not talking about when you're suspecting abuse. Just wanted to put that there. But, you know, the only only way we can have success and if we're demanding the other person to change, the only thing that continues to happen, and we, we've all been there, is that the blame game gets started. The scorecards come out uh, that you did this and I'm going to do it back, tit for tat. Um, change starts when both persons stop blaming because there's enough blame to go around usually in a in a situation to share but honestly look and acknowledge what needs to be changed on your part be awake and present in all of our relationship this will allow us to be transparent and trusting to let our authentic self show up from the very beginning um by leaving our past in the past so the ghost of relationships which happens uh can surface and valentine's day past will not cross contaminate our new maturing relationships with these ghosts gone they will not enter in at hello and all of us want to be happy in our daily life all of us want to be happy in our uh, in our relationships but the challenge for couples is to stay in the present moment and not go back into the past. I have often found that we all hide from happiness. In part, it's because we feel unworthy. Um, we're unable to trust uh, our, our, our own process. We are unable to let go of our want of a soulmate long enough to discover how to make it happen. So happiness doesn't hide from us. It's what how we feel that we're not worthy of happiness. So we hide from happiness and happiness in our relationships. And it comes out as really comes out now around Valentine's Day. The curious thing that happens, and the more we try to find happiness in our soulmate, the more it slips through our fingers. Plus, I think we set our happiness and soulmate standards so high, it is difficult for them to be met. So this is a time for that internal review. Am I making it so high? Am I making it clouded that the person has to guess what my expectations are? Make it, make it, making it more and more hidden will never, ever lead to happiness or contentment. We have to get it out. But we are so numb to what a pleasant or happy situation is. And those small joys of everyday life, those small acts of kindness that can build a sense of contentment that is essential to um, a part of happiness, somehow are not there. So let's take a moment, step back, take a moment, think about it. Take a moment and find out. You know, we've been learning uh, to be more efficient and expanding our social skills and learning skills. Um, 
and we are briefly unhappy while we're working on these new skills and new activities. But once we've learned them, we get what, what I call a long-term happiness bump. But it all starts with inside of ourself. So temporary unhappiness is caused by learning something new. Um, but it's enough that will give us a happiness bump because we learn something new and we expand our horizon and boost our happiness quotient. So as we're boosting our happiness quotient and thinking about that for Valentine's Day, this is a great place for us to pause. You've been listening to me, your host, Dr. Martha, coming to you live on BBM Global, Tune In and iHeartRadio. And stay tuned. Well, pick this up on the other side. French Rastafarian baker Chef Oug Mat is a fourth generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Chef Ouvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Ugmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Tune into It's All About You with host Dr. Martha Latz, a lively weekly broadcast on BBM Global Network, one of the most empowering shows for time-starved, overscheduled multitaskers. The professional expertise of Dr. Latz is directly available live every Thursday at 1 p.m. to answer and address concerns about relationships, life transitions of career, meeting, dating, and committed relationships. It's All About You with Dr. Latz will expand your understanding of current and concerns across your relationships by broadening and expanding possible solutions in developing skills for mutually desired outcomes. Dr. Martha's expertise is as a licensed marriage and family therapist, life, transition coach, and all things to do with communication at work, home, and with friends. Check out her website at auniquetherapycenter.com. Welcome back. I'm your host, Dr. Martha, coming to you live from BBM Global. Tune in on iHeartRadio, and the show is It's All About You. You know, before the break, we were talking about, and it all boils down to this, we all want to be happy. We all want to be content in our relationship. Um, when, when we are getting to reconnect with ourselves, when we are unsure of ourselves, what we do usually is we choose someone very quickly to be in our as our relation in our relationship and we're ignoring or overriding our own in, intuition have you ever said or ever thought to yourself i know this relationship is not my forever one but i still want it and it was painfully short and then you feel like such an idiot so stop. When you hear yourself saying any part of that phrase or thinking any part of that phrase, pause. Take a slow, deep breath in and a long exhale. And, um, and then think about it because you're rushing. Because if you're rushing, you're going to make a decision that's not going to be happy uh, happy for you, for your happiness. You're overriding your own intuition and your wisdom, when, w- inner wisdom. And it's more likely coming from a spot where you're feeling too anything. You're feeling uh, too lonely. You're feeling too hungry. You're feeling too hot. You're feeling too cold. You're going to make a decision when you're feeling too anything, uh, especially in a relationship. And more likely than not, the choice that you make will not get you your desired outcome. So pause and think about it and and respect your own process, okay? 
those of you who are, who are in new, middle, and long-term relationships, because we are all such creatures of habit, with a fear-based procrastination sprinkled in, we are running on autopilot, and our plans are uh, never leave our head. We're talking about it. We're talking to ourselves, but they never leave our, our heads. And they often go untested. Uh, only for you to continue to do the same old thing. Promising each other as you did, those of you in relationships last year, we will do something different. Do it this year. You have time. Uh, You know, don't get locked into that vicious cycle again. Be, Be comfortable in being uncomfortable with Valentine's Day because that might be you to have your own moving away from that you know we all know that valentine's day will pass but don't let it pass with deep disappointment according to the questions that are being asked and the comments that were being passed we all want a different uh, experience and there is still time so Um, In part three, which we'll have another part next week, we're going to explore that. Um, It's a Valentine's Day for those who are single and newer relationships, and we may want to put excitement back into our long-term relationships. But if we're not in relationship, how can we celebrate Valentine's Day um, with the people that mean a lot to us? No, so people that have meant a lot to you, you can have them as your Valentine if you're not in relationship. Um, so you know, there's a, a time to get things on track uh, with little or no cost. So that's where um, the concentration that we're going to talk about next week will be. Remember that we all desire happiness. Remember we all desire a relationship. Uh, we all we all desire being um, with someone who um, respects us. So so stay tuned. Um, I also want to let you t- tune into my series on, on Monday at one o'clock on close up uh, TV and radio and uh, the discussions that we're having about relationships there. Uh, So until next time, I want to thank you all for listening to It's All About You, live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. You can pick up my shows. They're taped. You can find them on my website. So I'm saying goodbye until you and I say hello again on Thursday, live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. You've been listening to It's All About You with your host, Dr. Martha Latz. Join us next week as we explore solutions and resolutions to some of your most challenging moments on Dr. Martha Latz, It's All About You. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.